All right, so let's go ahead and dive into our reference, our concept art, our project goals, and what exactly we're going to be making throughout, you know, the length of this course. Um, so the main goal here is to redesign um, the Unreal Mannequin or to have a, a character that we can use to, you know, show off, you know, body mechanic basics for animation or, or just in general, just a generic, you know, character that we can use for a bunch of different tests. Um, and that's that was essentially our goals. We wanted to have essentially like a, a crash test dummy um, so that we can start doing body mechanics and, and just overall um, approach a character um, that's, that's nice to have, that's appealing, um, that can be used for an assortment of different tasks, okay? Um, and here's essentially a little reference board that we had gathered um, for the initial start of this character. Just a couple quick images that we wanted to use as reference to get inspiration from, to see what's already out there, right? Um, and just that expresses the overall pill that we wanted to hit. So we have some characters from Apex Legends, right? Which is the default dummy that they have in, in the game. Uh, we have a Fortnite, you know, actual crash test dummy. Um, we have the mannequin, the Unreal mannequin that's default within Unreal Engine. Um, and we wanted to add our own little twist to it. And the twist we wanted to add was that we wanted to make it a little sci-fi. We wanted to add like the G.I. Joe, you know, snake eyes um, characteristics. We wanted it to be, you know, really cool, really awesome. Um, have some fun materials, have some fun, like integrated shape, you know, and silhouette to the design. Um, so we went, what y'all saw was a concept art um, from, you know, from Wesley Lin, who was a concept artist that helped us, you know, generate some, you know, base um, characters and concepts that we can go off of. Um, and so what I want, what I want you to note though, is that there's still going to be a, a discovery phase within ZBrush, within the sculpting phase. It's like essentially like a concepting for ZBrush phase that we're going to, you know, talk about throughout the length of this course. And so um, I just wanted to cover the, the, you know, the default character design um, that was concepted out for us. Um, but it still leaves room for design within ZBrush. And that's one thing that I want you to take note of is that if the character that that's final that you that y'all have seen on screen um, looks different than the concept art, that's because it is. And that we took liberties within the 3D space, right, to figure out um, specific solutions, maybe define areas a little bit more in the 3D space than was defined on paper. Um, but this is essentially like the jumping off point, the inspiration, um, and the guide that we're going to follow, um, not necessarily like one from one, but a good guide that we can follow as we create the character um, and the weapon tree and so on and so forth. And so I just want to dive into this document a little bit um, and let y'all know that this is essentially what I'm going to have up on my screen on the other screen while I'm sculpting. So um, although it might look like I'm just sculpting within ZBrush, just know that I have this reference up on the other screen and I'm going to be using this as guidance. Like I said, as guidance, not necessarily one for one, but definitely as a starting off point as I you know make progress on the ZBrush sculpt um, and, and we get to the final end result. Quick pause to tell you a little bit about Class Creatives. They offer a top-ranked game design curriculum online. All courses are taught by industry veterans with experience from studios such as Disney, Naughty Dog, Insomniac, Google, and more. Learn professional workflows such as 3D character modeling, utilizing industry standard software such as ZBrush, Autodesk Maya, and Substance Painter. The entire character design workflow is covered from start to finish in their masterclass offerings. Learn the entire process of animation and motion capture using Autodesk Maya by following the methods used to create industry quality professional animation. The full animation workflow was explained in detail in their masterclass courses. Extensive character rigging courses teach the process of how to custom rig characters for all of your project needs. Land that new job, receive higher pay, and stand out from the competition. The great thing about Class Creatives is the ability to learn at your own pace and your own schedule. Get started today for free with the link in the description. Okay, so let's dive in and start to concept out our character within 3D, um, within ZBrush. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to start to just get a base mesh, like a base um, set of clay and move the clay around in a position where I can really start to define the forms. Um, and essentially, I just want to put clay on the canvas, right? I want to make a mark. Um, and to do this, what we're going to go ahead and do is just utilize this Dynamesh sphere. Uh, duplicate it a couple times and have one for the head, have one for the chest. Right, one for the arms, one for the legs, um, until we have the whole body. Um, and the goal here isn't to get like the final defined form or the final defined silhouette. We essentially just want to put clay on the canvas for us to then, you know, take the next step um, of refinement and, and go from there. So what I'm going to do is go over to my subtools tab, right where my where my um, where my Dynamesh sphere is sitting. If I hit W on the keyboard, right, it gives me a move tool that I can go ahead and move up and down, and right, I can scale it. I could rotate this clay um, and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to go ahead and do really quickly is duplicate it, duplicate it. Maybe just get about three just to start off. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is move one of them up. Okay. And I'm going to have this be my head. 
Awesome. Gonna move the next one up. I'm gonna go ahead and have this one be like my torso. Then the one at the bottom we can go ahead and leave there for now. Um, and essentially this is gonna be my character, right? Um, it's just the balls of clay in like a 3D space, right? And I can go ahead and start to sculpt. So I'm gonna get my move brush. I'm gonna start to move the clay around. Um, one thing I want you to take note of is um, I have symmetry on. So if you see me hover over on right the right side, you see it affecting the left. If I hit X on the keyboard, that gets rid of symmetry. All right, so for the um, majority of the sculpt, it will be symmetrical. I think the entire sculpt is going to be symmetrical, actually. Um, and again, that's just X on the keyboard. Okay, so let's go ahead and just block in a quick head, right? It's going to move in and it's going to mainly use the move brush. Um, nothing too crazy. Maybe get the uh, damp standard in here a little bit. Start to define some of the facial planes. Um, from the jaw. And again, my goal here isn't to get the final form, right? It's not to get the final character on this pass. My main goal is just to have clay here so that I can start to sculpt. Um, again, I can control, click and drag to use Dynamesh, right? To just redistribute the polygons. Get my damn standard. I can start to carve in the jaw here. My move brush, I have to move the jaw a little bit. Awesome. Okay. And with that, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied for now. Again, it's not the final shape of the head, but it's a decent head shape in which it, it's like, it's essentially like a quick, it's like when, you, when you're drawing on paper, you have a thumbnail, you have a rough drawing um, from pen to paper. And essentially this is our rough drawing. Okay, we just want to gesture draw. We just want to gesture sculpt up so that we can go ahead and start to refine it a little bit later. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is move on to the next one. The next sub tool here. So if I alt click on a sub tool, by the way, alt left click, I can jump to and from. So instead of going into my sub tool palette and then manually clicking the sub tool, right? I can go ahead and just alt click one. Awesome. Another thing that you saw is that like if I hit the eyeball on the sub tool palette, if I click the eyeball, right? Nothing happens. But if I move to a different sub tool, right? It is now invisible. It's still there. It's just hidden. And to make it come back, just hit the eyeball again, and we're good to go. Another thing you can do is hit shift and then click on the eyeball, and it gets rid of everything. So if I move to a different sub tool, everything gets hidden. And then if I shift, click on the eyeball again, everything comes back. Just a little sub tool navigation trick there. Okay, so now I'm on the torso. All right, a little trick is sometimes I don't know which one I'm on, so if I just hit shift F, right, I know which one I'm on. Shift F. So now what I can go ahead and do is get my move brush and start to just move this torso somewhat into place. And again, the goal is just to get the clay down, not to get the final shape of the model, but just to get a rough silhouette. All right, I can start to sculpt in the pectorals, start to just sculpt in maybe the shoulder deltoids, carve some of this out. I'm a move brush. I can move some of this stuff out. And again, the goal here is just to get a rough gesture drawing, gesture sculpt of the character so that we can go ahead and start to refine as we make progress down the line. And I'm just going from play build up to trim dynamic, right? The damn standard to describe some forms. So clay build up again. I can alt to carve in. Okay. Get my damn standard here. Or my trim dynamic. Just carve some planes. One thing that I want to take note of is um, on my brushes. What might happen is if, if you have an extended piece of geometry like this, and I go to my clay buildup, for example, if I start to cart like sculpt in the front, it might affect the back of the model, the back of the sculpt. To clean that up, if I hit Alt A, um, every brush has this back face max toggle. If I toggle that, then whatever I do in the front won't affect the back. Okay, but if I have it untoggled, whatever I do in the front can sometimes leak into the back. It's more, it's a it just depends on how thin the surface is, right? And to avoid that, you typically just turn on back face mask, and then you can typically get rid of some of the 
front facing and back facing geo disruption that may occur. That's just back face mask. Awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and just get some more, let's make some more uh, quick adjustments here. Again, I have the concept art open on my left. I'm not really looking at it. I'm not really looking at it too much at this point, right? My goal here is just to put the clay down, like I said before. Um, I just want to make the mark. I just want the clay in the space, and then once it's in the space, once um, once I have my my torso in place, once I have my neck in place, once I have my head in place, then I can start to you know think about the proportions. I can think about the placement. Um, I can think about how these shapes are affecting one another. I can get my move brush again. That's just W on the keyboard. I start to put these where I think they'd work. Awesome. Okay, now what I'm going to go ahead and do is get this other sphere. I'm going to duplicate it one more time. So I just have another one there. I'm going to move it down lower. Okay. I'm going to come over here. Get my trim dynamic. Let's get a place for my hips here. Another hot tip is I can isolate. I can solo an object. If I go to transform, um, you'll notice that there's a ton of other options within transform. Like for example, symmetry is within transform. Um, what I'm looking for though is solo. Um, and if you notice here, it's this dynamic solo. If I hit tap it. I isolate my object. If I go to transform and I tap it again, right? What I did is I went ahead and just set that hot key for me to S. So control alt click it and then you can hit your hotkey for me that hotkey is s that just allows me to isolate an object let me go ahead and move this up now it's gonna be like my pelvis area nothing too crazy awesome we can go ahead and scale this out a little bit maybe for both of them Looking pretty cool. Now what I can go ahead and do is get another sphere, duplicate it. And again, I'm just duplicating it so that I have it in world space so that I can just always go back to that sphere. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off symmetry. So hit X. I'm going to move it over to one side. Okay. It doesn't matter the side, just any side you choose. What I'm going to go ahead and do now is hit Alt A. And then this button right here, mirror and weld, just allows me to mirror and weld my object. So now I have two objects. One on each side. Again, that's just mirror and weld. Now if I hit symmetry again, so hit X. Right now I can start to sculpt one sphere and it affects the other. So now what I can go ahead and do is scale this up, for example. I can start to, you know, form some legs really quick. Or essentially tubes, right? So I can use these tubes for the arms. I can use these for the legs. And so on and so forth. What I'm going to go ahead and do actually is I'm going to duplicate these just one time. Now I can move one of them in and I can start to shape them for the legs. I can add some thickness back here, All right? Dynamesh it, control click and drag on the viewport. And I can start to see what's affecting what here. I'm going to hide this here and I'm going to hide the meshes that were duplicated. I'm just going to start to put the clay in place and think about where the knee is, which is probably right here for me. Add a little bit of thickness here. I can rotate this into place so it's a little bit better. Think about the calf back here. And again, I'm not too concerned about like the overall proportions and, and like trying to make it read as the concept art right now. My first initial pass is just to get the clay down. Okay. Put the clay down. That's all I'm trying to do here. Okay. Got my legs. Again, nothing too crazy. Not perfect. Now what I can do is make these arms visible again, make the tubes visible, and I can go ahead and move these into place for my arms. What I'm going to do for these as well is instead of just having one whole mesh for the upper and the lower part, I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this one more time. 
I'm going to move it down here for the arm, for the low arm. I could have done the same thing for the legs. And in all honesty, I probably will. And I'll show you all how to separate, um, how to split the object into two a little bit later here. Awesome. Okay, so the goal here is to just put the clay down so that now I can go ahead and start to focus in, start to adjust proportions, um, and go from there. So what I'm going to do now, though, is I want to save my project, and we're going to go ahead and get that set up in the next in the next video here. Perfect.